Sometimes I review products where innovation does not always equal improvement. My name is Jamie Andrews and this is my review of the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra. Roborock's flagship model and with an equally matching flagship price of $1799. It's almost entirely redesigned from last year's S8 Pro Ultra model in many ways. So without further ado, let's begin with the overview starting with the robot. Up front we have the Reactive AI 2.0, which is similar to the one found on the S7 Max V and consists of an RGB camera, 3D structured light sensors, and an LED light to see in the dark. Up top we find three multifunction buttons, a home button, power button, and a mop button, which all three double as dock buttons when docked. The LiDAR dome is protected with a bump sensor and it also houses the three microphones for the Hello Rocky voice assistant. Around back we see a set of charging contacts and a single hole where the internal 100 milliliter water tank resides. To the left there is a dirt extraction port where dirt is removed from the internal dustbin into the dock. On the other side we see the new side mop that spins at 185 revolutions per minute and is designed to get closer to your baseboards and furniture. The front side spinning brush or flexi arm can swing out to get into hard to reach areas like the corners of your room. Under the lid, which is now removable and held on by a set of magnets, we find a Wi-Fi indicator light and reset button. The dustbin is totally redesigned and much smaller at 270 milliliters. The washable paper filter is removable and like all rubber rocks, it lacks a pre-filter. New is a side door for the dust extraction with a smaller door for improved airflow. Under the front, we see a set of cliff sensors and we can take a better look at that flexi arm. In the middle is a carpet detection sensor. The dual rollers are mostly unchanged, which still feature the option to lift when mopping or while returning to the dock. You may notice the ends of the rollers are a bit different, and that's due to the new cutters on the cover designed to remove hair from the axles. The side mopping pad is removable and has a dedicated water outlet to keep it wet. The main mopping pad is a bit smaller in size than the previous models and the Velcro holding it on is super strong. It features Viberize 3.0 that has two plates that vibrate up to 4000 RPM and thankfully we now have an additional water outlet to help keep the pad wet. The big news is the mop can now lift an incredible 20 millimeters to clear most carpets in your home. Looking at the dock, starting in the base, there is a washboard for this side mop. In the back, we have a set of charging contacts and the fill port to refill the robot's onboard water tank. You can also see the dust extraction port on the right-hand side. The dock drain filter is a two-piece design which opens up so you can clean inside. The mop is cleaned by a spinning brush roller that slides back and forth on a track across the mop. This is largely unchanged from the previous Ultra Dock models. Under the front lid, we find a 2.5 liter dust bag, which has not changed in size, but it has changed in shape. One new feature is a refillable 580 milliliter detergent injection tank, which will handle premixing detergent for washing the mop and when refilling the robot's onboard water tank. I normally recommend the manufacturer's solution, which I will leave a link to that below in the description. The clean water tank up top is a large size at 4 liters and interestingly comes with a silver ion block already installed which is known to cut down on bacteria growth. The dirty water tank also grows to 3.5 liters which means that both the clean and dirty water tanks are larger than the older Ultra Docks. The dock also features hot water mop washing which Roborock claims can get as hot as 140 degrees Fahrenheit which we will test. It can also dry the dock sink and both mopping pads at the same stated temperature. Moving on to the test stand we have several starting with the carpet pickup test where I scatter 54 grams of rice on medium pile carpet and send the S8 Max V for one pass in Max Plus vacuum mode. With the large 10,000 Pascal rated vacuum motor it was able to pick up 53 grams or 98% of the rice which is a good score. 
Okay, moving on to tile floor, where I scatter 130 grams of premium cat litter and send the S8 Max V out in one pass to pick up as much as it can. It was able to pick up a total of 122 grams or 94% of the cat litter, which again is a respectable score. While we are testing the vacuum, let's look at the sound of the vacuum motor. On balanced, it averaged 64 decibels, while boosting it all the way up to max plus produced about 70 decibels. Now onto the mopping test where I use exactly 4 milliliters of baked on hot sauce on my tile floor and send the robot out in deep mopping mode with two passes to mop up as much as possible. The S8 Max V does have an improved vibrating mopping system along with three water outlets and a side mop to help it with the stains and it was very effective removing 100% of the dried on stains. After the mopping test, you can see the side mop mainly helps around its edge, while the main mop had even coverage. I sent it back to the dock and put it through three deep wash cycles, and here are the results, which I think are pretty good, especially for the side mop. Speaking of that side mop, you may be wondering how well it works. In my testing, I was able to get close to the baseboards and furniture, which is great. However, if you have quarter round moldings like I do, expect that the mop will ride up on them. The side mop will also lift 20 millimeters with the main mop when crossing carpets, which will certainly clear medium and some large pile carpets. While we're on the topic of edge cleaning, let's look at the flexi arm, which is designed to reach in the corners of your room. I tested this many times with a large amount of coffee grinds, which overwhelmed it a bit, so I reduced the amount down to a more reasonable level and the results were mixed. At times the arm was too late coming out and by design when it hit something it stopped spinning altogether reducing the effectiveness. I expected the arm to reach out under my cabinets and furniture but it did not. After reaching out to Rubber Rock, I was told it would only come out when performing a whole house cleaning job so I tested this and while it did come out it quickly went right back in. I have 6 centimeters of clearance under my cabinets, so I'm not sure if it thinks that is not enough, so your results may vary. Let's move on to the object avoidance test, where I placed common household items in my living room and sent the S8 Max V out to avoid them. I run all my tests multiple times for consistency, including this one, and in each test it failed to detect the socks. It did however detect the wound up cord which is great news, along with staying way clear of the fake animal waste. In dark areas, the S8 Max V has an LED fill light to help it avoid objects. Because it uses an RGB camera, you can also view photos of the objects that it avoids in the app. I know some will be concerned with an RGB camera and microphones on this robot. Just keep in mind Roborock is also releasing an S8 Max Ultra version, which will be cheaper and lacks the voice assistant, remote viewing, and RGB camera in favor for Reactive 3D, which is the same system found on the S8 Pro Ultra of last year. Okay, let's switch gears and do a bit of testing with the dock, starting with the hot water mop washing, which for me fell way short of Roborock's claims. Let me explain. I started out with 75 degree tap water and set the mop washing to the hottest setting. The temperature in the dock base on average peaked around 92 degrees, and when I checked the mopping pad, I found a similar temperature. This peak temperature was found after the first 15 or 20 seconds into the wash cycle. In repeat runs, the most I was able to get was about 100 degrees, which is not what I consider to be very hot, more like warm. When we look at the power consumption, we begin to see the problem. In the beginning, it will spike to 11 amps and very quickly fall right back off. Later in the wash job, it briefly spikes again to a bit over 6 amps and then once again quickly falls right back off. This is simply not enough time to heat the water. Other robots that I have tested heat for much longer. On a more positive note, the hot air drying works well and after just 2 hours of drying on the dock, which is the minimum setting, the mop pads were both dry, as well as the dock sink, even under the filter. The max temp I saw there was about 118 degrees, a bit shy of the claimed 140 degrees. During the drying process, the power draw was around 1 amp, 
The next dock test was with the newly designed auto empty system. I started out with a completely full dustbin and ran the auto empty job which pulls about 6.5 amps and 730 watts of power. From about 5 feet away it produced 74 decibels of sound which was not too harsh on the ears. The results were positive as it was able to clear out all the contents of the dustbin. My last dock test is with the water consumption. When returning to the dock to wash the mopping pads, you have several choices in the app. Light, which uses 70 milliliters of water, balanced, which uses 200 milliliters, and deep, which uses 230 milliliters. There is a smart setting, but I found it to use 200 milliliters, the same as balanced. Another new feature is with the built-in voice assistant. This is Roborock's first go at a voice assistant, so they included a placard with the list of all the recognizable voice commands. Here are a few examples of it responding to my commands. Hey Rocky. I'm here. Go back to the dock. Okay, end the current task and start docking. Hey Rocky. I'm here. Clean the foyer. Okay, start performing selective room cleaning. Keep in mind the voice assistant can be switched off if you're concerned about privacy. Okay, let's go over a few pros and cons, starting with the cons. Since we're just talking about the Rocky voice assistant, I must mention the first con, which is that several times it has responded by mistake to our general conversations and the TV, which is a bit concerning. Thankfully, it has not taken any action based on these other than saying, I'm here. The next con is with the flexi arm, which I feel is an incredible design that needs some software refinements. For one, the robot needs to pause longer when approaching a corner to allow the side brush time to properly sweep the corner and then retract and then proceed. Next, it needs to come out under the cabinets and furniture, not only during an entire house cleaning, but room and zone cleanings as well. It also attracts more hair often than the stationary side brushes in my testing. The next con is with the hot water mop washing, which is not hot at all. While I found in my testing that hot water mop washing is not all that effective unless you are dealing with grease, you're paying for the feature so it should work as advertised. As for the side mopping pad, overall it is a success but I know many people will worry about it riding up on moldings and there is no way to disable it unlike a swing out mop featured on the competition and on the Curevo. Lastly, it will get hair wrapped around it, so there is another maintenance item needed for you to remove and then clean. These added features have caused Roborock to make some sacrifices. The biggest one being a much smaller 270 milliliter dustbin which completely maxed out in my cat litter test. Roborock has an answer for this, but it's less than ideal. There's now an option that you can set for the dustbin empty frequency, which states that it automatically empties during a cleaning. In my testing, I have mine set at high frequency. It will only empty after 30 minutes of cleaning, which is too long in my opinion, and it will only empty when it goes back to the dock to wash the mopping pads. So if you send it out in vacuum only mode, it won't return at all during a job since it only empties during a mop washing cycle, which there won't be one. The next sacrifice is with a smaller 100 milliliter onboard water tank and a smaller main mopping pad. My house is small, so these don't really impact me, but I figured I'd mention them since they are downgrades from last year's model. The next con is with Reactive AI 2.0, which appears to be recycled from the S7 Max V since it also had 2.0. I was excited when it first avoided the cord in my test. However, in real life use around my home, it ran over cord after cord, causing me to have to get it unstuck several times. The dual rollers are far more likely to suck up a cord than a single roller, so Roborock needs to do some work on this. The all rubber roller brushes are excellent at not getting hair wrapped around them, but they always get hair wrapped around the axles. Roborock designed a blade cutting system that only comes out when the cover is installed and designed to cut the hair off the roller axles. 
In my testing, they simply just didn't work, as you can see here. And the task of manually cleaning hair off the axles is much more difficult due to an extra rubber piece that first has to be removed. The older design is much easier to clean hair off as shown here on my S8 Pro. The very last con is that you can no longer use custom names for rooms in the app, likely due to the Hello Rocky voice assistant, which allows you to call out predefined room names for it to go out and clean. Moving on to the pros, and thankfully there are a good bit of those to help offset some of those cons. The biggest pro to me is with the across the board excellent cleaning ability. From the vacuuming to mopping, it does it all very well, and because it's Roborock, it has great navigation that is always spot on. The next pro is that we finally have a Roborock robot with detergent injection. That means no more guessing when pre-mixing detergent. No more slimy mess in your clean water tanks due to old detergent sitting in there for too long, and no proprietary detergent tanks. Next is with the larger water tanks in the dock and the vacuum bag, which no longer has a funky cover. The dock is also a bit slimmer and, in my opinion, a good bit more attractive. Being able to lift the mopping pad a whole 20 millimeters is an impressive feat and one that should allow it to cross thicker carpets. The app has many well thought out settings which are new. There is an option to boost the vacuum near pet supplies like litter boxes, pet beds, and food bowls. It works especially well around my litter boxes. With Reactive AI 2.0 come several new improvements like the ability to take pet snaps when it sees a pet. Just look for a paw mark on your map after cleaning and you will see photos of your pets. There's also a pet patrol mode where you can send it out to find your pets and take photos. Rubberock has now programmed in detection for mirrors which has always caused mapping issues for people with floor mirrors in their homes. Love it or hate it, it is back again and it is the ability to remote view the camera with two-way audio, which we will use always when we are away from our pets for an extended period of time. Roborock has one of the best, if not the very best app in the industry and nothing has changed here. I don't know if you've noticed it, but Roborock now has the robot backing into the dock for the charging, which means it no longer needs to turn around to have the mop washed, plus it enables you to use the robot's buttons as dock buttons. It is also more effective with drying the mop and the dock sink. The last pro is with the addition of two extra water outlets on the mop, which will help keep the mop evenly wet. In conclusion, it seems like Roborock decided it needed to play catch up with other flagship models on the market, but in doing so, their execution has slightly missed the mark, which is fairly unusual for Roborock. Maybe they've just simply rushed the hardware to market without proper testing. I have reported all these issues to Roborock and I am hopeful that they can and will resolve all of them very soon. I've always been a big fan of Roborock, and I must say with all the drawbacks to the S8 Max V, it is not a terrible product. It has excellent navigation, an incredible easy to use app, and excellent across the board cleaning performance, which are the most important things to consider when purchasing a robot vacuum. The problem is I'm not sure it can demand the extra money over last year's S8 Pro Ultra, and with the QRevo Max V about to launch, it might be worth waiting for my review on that product before pulling the trigger. It is my hope that they can resolve some of these issues with future firmware updates, and if they do, you will see the S8 Max V Ultra right back here on my channel with a full update. If you've made it this far in one of my longest video reviews to date, I want to say thanks, and I hope if you've not already, that you will consider subscribing to my channel, where I'll always bring you unbiased reviews. Thanks for the support and take it easy everyone. Bye bye.